Hi everyone, this is Robert with Better Geiger Radiation Detectors, and today I'd like to tell you all a little bit about the, the new variation, the new product, the S2 Mini. So I'm just trying to make a quick video here to explain what it is, um, explain a little some details about it, do a few demonstrations and so forth. Um, to make a long story short, it's basically the S2, but in a smaller package. That's the short version, and it has a rechargeable battery, and I'll get into some of those details and a few small differences, but you know that's that's the key the key part here. And before I get into the details, I'll just say real fast, there's a discount code YouTube Mini for ten percent off. You can use that for this month only. It's now uh, this video is coming out in the middle of January, and you can use that until the end of the month. And this is for pre-orders right now. So this I'm just trying to kind of kickstart you know people people buying this and, and sort of get it out in there in, uh, out into the world and so that's what the code's for to sort of encourage you to give this a try and those pre-orders should go out by the end of February so to get into it a little bit um, I'll do I'll cover a few quick minor points though what's going to be different between this and what actually ships there's a sort of crude cutout here um, the final version will have a, a, a more sort of fitting size for the, the USB-C connector, so don't worry about that. That's just this this prototype. And this, this material here will be matte, not so glossy and reflective. Similar to the S2, it has this matte finish, which I think looks a little better, and it doesn't get fingerprints and stuff like that on it. So that'll be a little different. And there will be a marking up here showing where the... Um, the sensor is so on this on the s2 mini the sensor is right here in this corner so that'll also be added but otherwise it'll be the same shape same size same features uh what's what's goes into production uh compared to this prototype so like i said um it's smaller it's a little more pocket friendly device but the sensor inside is exactly the same as the s2 so uh, basically similar features, similar sensitivity and all that. I'll get into that a little bit more in a, diff uh, in a minute, just sort of the general features um, if you're not familiar. Uh, first, I will mention a couple differences. So like I said, it's smaller. It has a USB-C connector, so you can use your standard chargers that you probably have a lot of. Uh, to charge it, the battery will be around 30 hours or so. With the, with the display in a normal mode. If you go into the dark mode, it'll be longer. It's uh, a little bit less than the S2 because this has two AA batteries inside. So you can basically, you know, swap out the batteries and so forth, whereas this, you have to recharge it. Uh, so that's a little different. The display is just a little smaller. Uh, I forget the exact numbers, but it'll be listed on the website. So just kind of matching that that smaller size to kind of get everything crammed in there. It's a little bit of a smaller display, but I still think it's it's pretty comfortable to use. Um, those are the main differences. So to get into some of the features that are pretty much similar between the two, I'll set that aside for a second. Basically, if you're not if you're familiar with the S2, it's going to be all very familiar and comfortable. You have six buttons here. You know, you press the sound button and you get the clicks on and off. Uh, so you get basically a very clear audible response if there's a, a, a source or an elevated amount of radiation. So this is the, the test source. If you're based in the U.S., this is an optional add-on. When you buy a detector from me, you can add this small amount of, of naturally occurring uranium ore as a test source to play around with. So that is the sound, and then you have basically the mode button, which lets you sort of cycle through different modes. First, there's basically the live dose reading, and you can adjust in the settings, which I'll show in a second, how you can adjust basically how, how, how responsive it is from about 10 to 30 second averaging time. And so here we have microsieverts per hour, um, the top right shows if there are any alarms uh, active, and then in the settings you can set basically alarm thresholds. You can have an alarm for the total amount of dose that it's acquired or, or measured since it's been powered on, and there's another alarm, which is the dose rate. So you can set both 
or either of those on or off, and you can adjust the, the levels. And then there's a battery status indicator. Uh, there's a word normal, high, or danger in three ranges to give kind of a very simplistic um, clue as to, you know, if, if, if level, levels are roughly in a elevated range or not in case you're not familiar with the numbers. And then here it tells you it's showing microsieverts per hour dose. I go to the next mode, basically everything the same, but millirem per hour instead of microsieverts per hour. Next mode is counts per minute. So that's actually the, each click would be like one count. So it tells you the count rate in, in counts per minute. And that's not linearly, linearly related to the um, dose rate because what this device has a, a scintillator inside and basically each time some there's radiation interacting inside, it sees how much energy was deposited and basically how, you know, how energetic that interaction was and, and adjusts the dose rate. So I'll do a quick demonstration in a minute what that looks like, but I'll just finish showing the modes here first. So it has a sense power on and it shows, you know, the amount of time, counts per minute, dose, uh, average dose rate and total dose since it's been powered on and then you can reset it, you know, by, by pressing this button and then confirming. Uh, and then there's all time dose. So that's basically all the times it's been powered on um, and it saves that number and adds to it as, as you turn it on the next time. Uh, that can also be reset. So then there's the dark mode where if you want to just stick it in your pocket, it'll save a little bit of battery life by not having a display on. And then basically back to the start. So like I said, it's energy compensating and that's, that's different than a typical Geiger counter. And um, I'll give a little demonstration here. So this is a quite low energy cobalt 57 gamma source. It's about 122 keV. So if I put that near the sensor, you'll see the dose rate goes up a little bit because there is some added dose from this artificial radiation source. So it's settling at about one microsievert per hour or so. And basically, if I go to count rate, it's around 9,000 something. So it's a quite high, if I turn the sound on, it's gonna be screaming. You see, it's really a lot of counts. So that's 9,000. And we said it was about um, about one microsievert per hour at that, with the source sort of placed right up against it. And now we can check a cesium-137 source, which is 662 keV, so it's a much higher gamma energy. So I'll again put the, the detector there, and we'll take a quick look. And you see very quickly the dose rate is going much, much higher. So it's at about, uh, we'll see where it settles here in a second, roughly 16 point something microsieverts per hour. So it's about 16 times higher dose rate. But if I go to the count rate, uh, it's actually a little bit lower. So basically you see the ratio between count rate or dose rate and count rate is very different because of the higher energy. And that just shows how it's basically taking that energy of the, the gamma uh, into account when it's giving the dose rate. And that's something a traditional Geiger counter doesn't do. And that's one of the advantages of this simulator. Another really important difference between this particular sensor and the Geiger tubes that are commonly available on, on very cheap Geiger counters that are, that are commonly purchased by hobbyists and amateurs is that this has a much higher maximum range. So the S2 and the S2 Mini both uh, they both have the energy compensation and, and similar features, and they both go up to about 100 millisieverts per hour as the maximum range if you're using a uh, cesium-137 source. So typical Geiger counters usually go to about one millisievert per hour as the max. So if you're thinking about buying something for an emergency or some kind of extreme environment or, or emergency scenario, that's a very big difference and an important feature of, of uh, both the S2 and the S2 Mini. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to show. Um, that's the S2 Mini in a nutshell. As always, if you have questions, you can use the contact form on the website and I can try to get back to you or leave a comment and I'll try to keep an eye on that. As I said at the start, if you're interested in the S2 Mini pre-order, 
There's the code YouTube Mini. I'll put a link in the description. That's for 10% off any order for the month of January. It's now January 2025, and this video will be released in the middle of January. So you have a couple weeks to use that if you're interested. The pre-orders are planned to be shipped out by the end of February. So I hope this is interesting to you. Um, as always, uh, if you think, if you want to help help this gain visibility, you know, do the things the algorithm likes. If you want, you can like this video, share it with someone, subscribe to the channel. There will be more videos coming out. Um, I've been planning some educationally oriented videos. I have a couple out, but I'm planning more. That's going slower than expected, but uh, I will try to get to those as soon as I can. So keep an eye on the channel. Keep an eye out for the S2 Mini shipping out, uh, planned to be shipped by the end of next month. So thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, I uh, hope it's interesting and feel free to reach out if you have questions. Thanks.